Okay, hold on. Sorry. So we that Frank, Let me move this up. So Frank, I'm like, Frank, she up. messed it up. All right. Oh, no. Hey, everybody. I am Haley. And I am David. And welcome back to the soccer show, Two Americans Talking European Football. Haley, my biggest takeaway of the week, we only had two games, but my biggest takeaway of the week was it was, it was a first touch from Jess Fishlock, and you'll see it now. And it, I'm excited about it because Jess has still got it. Like She's a phenomenal player. But for this touch, she uses the outside of her foot to keep the ball's momentum going. Unfortunately, she missed the shot, but that was technical excellence from Jess Fishlock. And she's set to leave Reading, I think, early April, but she has done her job there. She's been just a stalwart, their best defensive player, their best offensive player. She's been great. And, you know, she's kept them out of the relegation zone and, and you know, they're competing in the middle of the table there. Which is also good for the NWSL because she's going to come in all guns blazing. She will be guns blazing. All right, my biggest takeaway of the week after Everton's 4-0 win, I know we always talk top four in this league, but I think we got to make it top five. I think... Everton has moved themselves out of the middle of the table conversation, and I think we need to put them up there with the big four. I completely agree. Um, we are both we both turned into Everton fans. We're, yeah, overnight, yeah, really. Yeah, and I'm I'm really excited to see them next season because they've got the they've got the the skeleton of a really good team right now. They're very organized, and I like a lot of their signings. I think bringing Jill Scott in is a big move. Resigning Izzy Christensen, signing Haley Rosso, kind of last year. I I'm I'm impressed. I, I like what they're doing there. All right, Dave, it is time for our key clips of the week. Uh, We each pick three. My number three video this week was a breakdown in the Birmingham City defense that led to a Claire Emsley goal. So just a little bit of a misclearance or mispass there, and they pay the price. Claire Emsley, she can do that in her sleep. It was a good finish, though, from her. Like, I don't oh, want to yeah. take away from that finish because she, no. she did really well. It's funny you, that you say it because my number three clip is also a bit of a shambles from Birmingham. It was another one where it was just an <laughs> like I'm cringing at that clearance. And yeah. McGill, again, not an easy finish, right? But what are you doing? Come on. But respect to that McGill, that turn on the half volley. That's a yeah. good finish. Like, that's decent. They yeah, they don't, they don't get away. And I think, you know, you watch film this week and you, you take a good long I think, hard look at I yourselves. Think, I think when we spoke earlier, you, you said, they punish. They do. Everton they do. will you said punish you. Punish. Yeah, I like that. All right. My number two clip this week, I got to give some love to the keepers. Uh, in this case, it is uh, Grace what Maloney. A, what, what a surprise. What a surprise. But just good positioning. Again, probably not the best touch. Oh, but that... You're saying good positioning, Cop, but what about poor decision making from me forward? It is. And she bails her team out here. Obviously, that is not a great moment, but she scrambles, gets across her line, and makes a save. And then I think this is probably her best save of the day. She's just calm. She's just calm in the box in her positioning. Mm-hmm. She doesn't overadjust, and she makes good, clean saves that allowed her to help her team keep a clean sheet. Yeah, no, that was that was some good saves. Um, my my number two is is more of a public service announcement, really. It's why why players still shooting from 30 to 35 yards out when the stats clearly say that's not going to go in. Uh, this one's Alana Kennedy. I know Alana's got a great strike on her. It's fantastic. but And I'm not having a go at Alana here, but the, the psychology of it is really interesting to me because what happens is players will score one goal like this in you know two years ago and they will think they can still do it time and time and time and time again. And instead of looking at the stats and looking at the red dots on the on the uh, field where they don't score from, and make a better decision. So it always interests me when players they continue to to shoot shoot these shots when it's not going to happen. All right, my number one clip. We got to go with a great goal finished off here um, by Alicia Lehman, and what a ball by Claire Emsley. And I believe that was her first goal for Everton, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she's, she's, what a she's, she's there on none for West Ham, right? Yep. Yeah, it's good. It was a good finish. Bullet header. Yeah. Textbook header, we would call that. And she Textbook just bullies header. her defender and, and wins the ball. And my my uh, number one clip of the week is 
it's kind of like a 50 50 with with Hayley uh, Rasso and Jill Scott. I love the finish, but I also love the uh, the run from Hayley. And you can see the ball there. She's That's so tech, quick, but look at the cross. Like she doesn't just like pity pat that ball in. It's like she whips that ball in. And then for Jill Scott to have the technique of like turning and striking that ball so well, fantastic goal. Today, we are so very lucky. We have just the definition of a winner joining us today. She's a World Cup champion. She's an Olympic champion. She played for Arsenal. She's played all over the US. Um, we are so lucky. Please join us in welcoming ATA Ambassador Heather O'Reilly. Heather, welcome to the show. Haley, uh, and gotta hype you up a little bit. Yeah, I love if you could be my forever hype woman, that would be awesome. And I'll follow I'm you sure around. I was a winner. I did the W on my forehead, and that just says it all, doesn't it? Just get her, get her a <laughs> megaphone just to follow you around every time you go into a store, and every yeah. time you walk into your own coffee shop. I want, I want, I want <laughs> Kottmeyer there with a megaphone. Yeah, exactly. Heather, we know you're an Arsenal fan, but we want to run through, we, we each came into this and we're all going to say who we think is the best player in the league. Um, and we'll, we're going to have you go last. I don't think there's a huge secret to who you're probably going to pick, but we will get there eventually. I'm going to lead us off. I am making the case for Fran Kirby. And I mean, Chelsea right now, top of the table, it's hard enough to pick a who is a best player on this team, let alone in the league. And for me, Fran is in form right now. She's on fire. She's her movement off the ball is incredible. She's super quick, super fast. And I don't think this team works as well without her. Um, and I've, I've just been so impressed. And I really think she is on fire lately. Heck of a player. And what she have like a million assists and a million goals this season. I mean, every time I think I that's the official stat line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, I don't disagree with Fran. I think she's phenomenal. And like what you said then about Chelsea being a different team with her is, is very, very true. And I think they proved that this weekend. Um, however, um, I also like to tell you a lot that you're wrong because, <laughs> because the best player in FAWSL this year is our own homegrown Sam Mewis. And let me tell you why. Because, hey, oh, you know for a fact how difficult it is to make a transition from one league that's got a very different style to another league. Usually players take a season, season and a half to do it. Not Sam Mewis. Sam Mewis just channels her inner UCLA marauding wildebeest of a Sam, Samantha Mewis, destroys every midfield in that league. And I mean destroys, like throws people around, scores goals, gets assists. And I think we are starting to see a peak Sam Mewis, she's just started to climb that hill with a peak. And I'm so happy for her because as a DM, you do not get the, the, the big ups that all the forwards get and everything like that. You don't get the headlines. But Samantha Mewis is carving headlines for herself. I think her and Christy are just trying to one-up each other constantly right now. Well, that probably has propelled them in their entire career. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Beast Mode Dave, Sam, the tower of power, what a player. She just eats ground for breakfast, as not mm. she? Crushes grass through the midfield. Just She's on another level. Right up. Oh, hey, we've got to get you on all the time. You're brilliant at this. <laughs> hey, who's yours? The best player in the league by a country mile, and that's Viv Miedema. Miedema is the best striker, the best number nine in the league, and perhaps Hey, I would say maybe in the world. She's a clinical finisher. She scores goals for fun, every kind of goal. Um, and you can make the case that Arsenal is by far not the team that they are currently without Viv Miedema. She's so influential to them winning games um, and, and getting goals. And I think that she, uh, yeah, she's the player to watch and she's the player that's going to, lead Arsenal to, to some good things this season. But it is an uphill battle for them, I will say that. Heather, I know Arsenal is not having their best season, but I'm coming into this show kind of with a blank slate. And at the end of the season, I'm going to decide who I'm giving my loyalties to. And I know that you and Dave are both Arsenal fans. So even though this hasn't been their best year, why should I be an Arsenal fan? It says William's mom, if you're wondering what it says on the back. <laughs> Uh, I think you should be an Arsenal fan because uh, uh, similar to the 
the history of the men's side, um, I think that the Arsenal way is very uh, sophisticated and methodical and they don't freak out when things are not going well. They continue uh, with their style, with their identity and coach Joe Montemuro has uh, the players ticking and just kind of sticking to their game plan. And with players like Kim Little, Viv Miedema and Jordan Nobbs, uh, I think that they will continue to climb the table and make a run towards the end of the season when some of the other teams maybe have already hit their peak. That's, that's my best way to say it. Uh, I think they're consistent and they're, they're class essentially. Compelling arguments. Heather, thank you so, so much for being here. Uh, this is a pleasure. You're going to have to come back because this was so fun. Thank you, Heo. Yeah, thank you guys. That was a lot of fun. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube page and catch our next episode. Also, subscribe to the Just Women Sports newsletter and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. See you all next Wednesday. TikTok's where it's at, cop. Gen Z.